This video is going to cover how we can use raycasting to implement an is grounded check. Let's get started. To fix our player's infinite jump issue, we need to implement something called an is grounded check. Basically, this means we need to determine if our player's feet are touching the ground, and then only allow them to jump if that condition is true. First, I'll go up here and I'll make a private boolean variable, and I'll call this is grounded. And then we'll say here in our update, if we press the jump button, we should jump, but is grounded should also be true. We could verify this by using two equal signs and then writing true, but we can also just shorten this by saying is grounded, which means the same thing as the two equal signs is true. It's just shorter to write. Let's use raycasting to add some is grounded logic. What is a raycast? Well, it's kind of like a laser pointer, but let's visualize how it works. For starters, I'm going to go here in update above our jump method, and I'm going to say bool hit equals physics 2D. If you're in a 3D game, you'd want to use physics, just physics, but this is 2D. And then we're going to say raycast, and we're going to open some parentheses. And immediately, it's going to give us an idea of what it's looking for. First, it needs an origin point, so I'm going to tell it transform.position, and then it needs a direction to send the raycast or the laser in. And in this case, we want to check the ground below us, so we're going to say vector2 dot down. Then it needs the distance it should travel. We'll calculate this momentarily, but for now, I'm just going to write 1.5f, and then it needs a layer mass. Basically, which layers is it okay for it to intersect with? In this case, I'm going to say layer mask dot get mask parentheses ground. And now we won't actually be able to visualize this yet, but we can do that by writing debug dot draw ray. And then we can again feed it a start point, which is going to be trans form dot position. We're going to give it a direction. So vector two dot down. And for the draw array, we have to multiply it. So we're going to say times 1.5 F. And then we can optionally give it a color. So I'm just going to give it color dot red. Now, if I was to save and go back to Unity, I can see that we have this little line here, which is essentially a representation of our raycast. This is better for the purposes of doing an isGrounded check because in this case, once his logic is implemented, it wouldn't care if I'm standing next to the wall or not, even if the wall is tagged as ground, it would only care if this little laser here is hitting the ground beneath me. Now, raycasting can be expensive to perform, so we probably don't want to be checking at every frame. Really, we just want to check it when we're pressing the jump button. So I'm going to delete this is grounded boolean variable, and I'm going to delete this boolean in here. And instead, we're going to write a method that will do a grounded check for us. We're going to call this private bool get is gr grounded with a capital G. And notice this is not private void, this is private bool because we want this method to basically perform a calculation for us. Then we're going to take this line from here, cut it and paste it in here. And I don't actually even need to declare a boolean, I can just say return this bit of code we wrote up here. Now after the and sign, I can write and get is grounded. So essentially, whenever we press the jump button and only when we press the jump button, should we actually do this grounded check? And I'll delete that draw array, we don't need that anymore. And now we can go back and test that out. So before testing, there's actually one more thing we need to do. We need to make sure that the layer for our floor and floor our, and for our wall is both set to ground. So I'm gonna select them both and I'm gonna go here to layer. And I already have one set up as ground, but if you don't, you can just press add layer, type in ground for your layer, and then go back here and set them up. I'm gonna set those both to ground. Let's hit play. And now if I jump, I can jump here, but I cannot double jump it against the wall. It did kind of look like I double jumped, but that actually doesn't have to do with me touching the wall. It has to do with the ray cast itself being a little too large. So even if I was to keep hitting space over here, you can see that I'm jumping when I'm still not completely grounded, which isn't ideal. So we can take a look at fixing that next, but this is a lot better. The reason the jump looks a bit wonky right now is because I just manually typed in 1.5F. That kind of a guess as to the player's height. But if you recall from our other video, on keeping the player within the screen bounds, there's a way we can tell exactly what the player's height is. So if you don't, just follow along, but I'm going to type serialize field, 
private sprite renderer sprite renderer and then we will make a new private float variable and we will call this player half height i'm now going to recreate our start method and in here i'm going to set up player half height to be equal to sprite renderer dot bounds dot extents dot y and this will give us exactly half the player's height. Now, instead of setting this to an arbitrary 1.5f, I can say set this equal to player half height plus a little bit of an offset, say 0.1f. And if we want to see what that looks like, we can once again bring the debug.draw array back. I've just gone ahead and quickly typed that over here. To test this, I'm going to drag the sprite renderer into our player jump, and then I'm going to hit play. And now we can see that the ray is exactly half the player's height plus a little bit of offset, which gives a much better looking jump. Finally, I'll just mention, you can change your jump force to any number that works for you. You can make your player jump higher and lower, and you can also go into your rigid body and change things like the gravity scale, which would make them fall a lot faster, and then you might want to up the jump force to compensate for that. So there's really no right or wrong here, it's just about finding something that works for you and your game. In the next video, we'll be adding a double jump to our player. I'll see you there.